What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be taking a look at this PowerFlex 525 drive which is currently wired into this three-phase motor that's sitting next to all of my PLC equipment that you guys usually see behind me. But ultimately what I want to do is show you guys how to network with this drive through the PLC and then we're going to be installing and creating some fairly simple logic with these two discrete buttons in order to start and stop the drive through the ethernet features but as of right now i have to just wire up to start on a press of this green button and stop on the press of this red button through the digital inputs that are going to be located on the drive so in case you're curious to see the wiring i'm just going to quickly remove this panel to show you the wires and the diagram is going to be on your screen as well so all i'm doing is like i said with this green button i'm going to start the motor and i don't know how well you can see it on the camera but it's definitely it's definitely spinning and when i press the red button it's going to slowly decelerate and then stop and turn off the drive at that point but we are going to like i said we're going to give this drive an ip address we're also going to plug in the cable which is going to be communicating back to this l24 er compact logics processor and then we're going to program in the logic for the buttons without any further delay let's get started before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel all right so this is our powerflex drive what i'm going to do first of all is demonstrate the wiring for the buttons so i have a start and a stop so my start is going to be on this green wire and my stop is going to be on the gray wire and the common is going to be coming back from pin number 11. i don't know how well you can see the numbers but i believe like so it's going to be a little bit better i'm also going to be posting some diagrams on the solusplc.com website but i'm going to put the cover back on and we're going to configure the drive for ethernet so whenever you're working with a live drive highly recommended to leave that on so what i'm going to navigate to is to parameter let's see here so parameter 50 Parameter 53 is the parameter which allows us to do a complete reset. One thing you'll notice is that if you leave your cursor at the parameter, you're going to be able to see what that parameter does. So I'm going to write, I believe it is a 2 into the parameter. Let's just double check. So 2 is factory reset. So like I said, I had to make some changes in order to accommodate the button control. I'm going to factory reset the drive, press enter. It's going to fault out for a second, but that's completely normal. It's essentially performing the reboot. And once it's back online, we can start setting the parameters that are going to be required in order to communicate over Ethernet, which are essentially just the IP address and the subnet mask. So let's just escape out of this fault. If we press stop, I believe that should be okay. So here we need to navigate to C, enter. And here I'm just looking back at the sheet. So C128 is going to be boot P versus internal parameters. So two is the boot P. Option one is going to be parameters. So I'm going to write that one, press enter. 129 is going to be my first octet so 192 and the easiest way you can either hold down low or you can scroll down by numbers but essentially it's just quicker to do it this way so 192 I'm going to go back 192 escape 168 and if you've been following some of my videos, I did show the spreadsheet which contains all of the IP address uh, devices on my current network. 192.168.1.7. Seven. So 7 is the last octet of for this PowerFlex drive. Next, we have the subnet mask. And the subnet mask is going to be 255... 255, 255, and then zero. 
And at this point, we are almost done. What we do need to go back to is that parameter 53. And what we're going to write is instead of doing a factory reset, we're going to write a four, which is just a module reboot. And that allows us so module uh, reboot and that allows the IP address to actually take place. So we're going to press enter on that four. It's going to reboot the drive or essentially just this uh, front programmable part. And once it comes back online, we should be able to establish communication as we would expect. Last thing I'm going to do, and I recommend to usually power down before you plug in any cables, but I'm going to remove this panel and I'm going to install an ethernet cable, which is going to go from this drive into the unmanaged switch that I have talking to the PLC and is on the same network as my computer so that we can program the drive and access it as well. Let's turn our attention next to the other pieces of hardware, which are going to be the two buttons, and we're going to be wiring those into the PLC. All right, so now we're going to wire in the buttons. As you can see, I have them in my hand. They are still sitting on the table. We do have two wires coming back from the buttons. That being said, the Compact Logics L24 ER uh, QB1B is able to be configured to either be a syncing or a sourcing input PLC. And that's configured through the use of a jumper wire, which is going to go from the common, which I'm just trying to count. So the way you essentially position your wires is that it starts at zero all the way here. And then you're going to have eight inputs and then you're going to have a common for that section. So one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. They don't necessarily align that well, which is kind of a kind of an annoyance when it comes to setting up this specific PLC, but that's going to be your common right there. And what I mean by don't align is essentially the zero translates to this zero over here. So it's not always obvious which one is which based on that image alone. So I do recommend that you pay close attention and you don't make the mistake of connecting some other inputs to a unwanted source. Here I'm going to need a slightly bigger screwdriver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this ground and I'm going to land that common on the ground. Now at this point, the PLC is set up to be, uh, like I said, a syncing input type. And this of course depends, this is the conversation that you might have with regards to your PNP versus NPN sensors. That being said, in North America, which is where I'm currently at, the common setup is to have a uh, PNP to a syncing input. So we're going to start with the start button and I'm going to wire that in. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing on this orange terminal that I have on the side here and I'm landing the cable. And then I have a stop button, which is this gray wire that I'm untangling from the bottom. So this gray wire is going to come in to terminal number two. Okay, so those are two inputs for the buttons, but we're still not done. We need to land. I don't know if you've noticed the wiring on my two buttons, but I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so the camera is now focused. You'll notice that on my red button, like I said, you have the common and then that goes back to the single, which is on the gray wire and on the blue, on the green button, which is going to be the start. We have this red on the terminal on the bottom and then a green, which comes out. Now, why is this wired so? Now, if you look closely on this button, you'll notice that the red button is normally closed, meaning that the two terminals at the top are made in a normal state, whereas the green button is connected on the bottom where the button is essentially normally open. And this is a normal general setup for a motor starter where you have something that needs to be closed on the start, but it remains closed until, uh, until essentially the stop needs to be pushed to open or break the circuit. And you can do this, you can switch the logic around and it doesn't really play a big role if you uh, if you do it via programming, but that's just a normal way to kind of set those up so that you have so that you have a normal motor starter circuit based on some of the older diagrams and ways to do this. 
Now let's uh, let's power this on and we'll see what this looks like in action. Alexa, turn on Vlad Plug Two. All right, so the PLC is back online, and what you'll notice at the moment is that the input indicators are going to be as follows. So the zeroth one is turned off, and the first one is turned on. Now the reason for that, of course, is because my red button or my stop button is on the second input which is going to be number one here i don't know how well you can see it but it's the light that's currently turned on and if i press the button it's going to turn off and go away so that essentially tells us that the button is set in normally closed state and the green button which is going to be on that input number zero once i press it then the input comes on just as we would expect and so everything seems to be working fine. The wiring is correct. We have the motor on the network of the PLC. So let's get into Studio 5000 and finalize the programming. All right, so here's our PowerFlex. Let's go back to the general tab. It's going to be as we've programmed on 192.168.1.7. And if we go into this drive tab, we can find the parameters. And if we click on these, we'll need to make a few modifications. So scrolling down, there's going to be a start source. So instead of starting the PowerFlex from the keypad, we want to start it from Ethernet IP. And speed reference. For now, let's leave it at the potentiometer, which is just going to allow us to control it from that panel. And that should be it, I believe. Let's test it like so. Let's just double check that it took. Ethernet IP, okay, perfect. We're going to click on OK, and what I'm going to do is effectively use something. Uh, let's see, let's just create a new program. Let's create a new program. So this is going to be PowerFlex 525 control. And I'm going to create that. I'm going to also create a main, which is where we're going to add a bit of logic so this is going to be main ladder logic diagram and let's open that up we also need to make sure that the main is the first program of that uh, of that program the main routine let's hit apply okay and here we can start creating the logic now let's first identify where those inputs are coming in and that's going to be on the 1769 bus of the PLC. And it's going to be under this embedded I.O. Once we select the discrete I.O., we'll notice that the tags have been pre-populated. So they're going to be under local one input since we've used the inputs. And that's going to be under control scoped tags. Local one. Let's just monitor local one. Input data. And here we have both of those tags, so 0 and 1. So 0, once again, that's going to be our start, and 1 is going to be our stop. Let's go back here. And I'm actually going to alias the tags just to demonstrate that um, functionality. So let's see here. So start is going to be 0, and instead of doing this, I'm going to call that our flex 525 start. And let's right click, press new. And here I'm going to alias, alias for that specific tag. It's going to reside within the scope of this program. Let's hit OK. And here I'm going to call it PowerFlex 525 underscore stop. New. And this is going to be an alias for this one. Boolean. Perfect, let's hit create. And next we're going to find the output for the PowerFlex. And if we, in a similar fashion, click on the PowerFlex or select the PowerFlex, we'll notice that there's going to be some module defined tags associated with it as well. So PF1, and we're looking for the output this time since we're going to energize an output in order to start the motor. So let's look here, so PF, PF1 output, I'm going to put that right there. And of course, once the motor is started, 
So here you're, you're not going to need a latch and actually the logic is going to be a little bit different, I believe. So there's going to be a stop as well. So it's not going to be like start stop like so. It's going to require a stop condition. So let's see here, stop. And this is of course, so this is going to be energized. So this is going to be, and let's just, let's create this logic and see what the, um, what the situation is. Okay, so it looks good, but the motor should be stopped right now. So let's look at this. So this is going to be an XIC as well. Actually, let's do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have start and then we're going to have stop. And I'll explain what I'm doing once I, so let's do this. Power flex 525 start request. So this is going to be an internal tag that we're going to use to store what we want the motor to do. So let's do it like that. And here I'm going to create this latch. Okay. And we'll deal with the start and stop in just a moment. So let's, let's just focus on this for now. So this is what we have as far as the buttons go. And this should actually be energized. Let's go look at, uh, let's monitor this. So this tag needs to be an XIC. So since the button is normally open, this tag needs to be an XIC. I made a mistake. Normally I'm used to putting an XIO there because all of my buttons are normally open. So here, if we press the start button, then the motor start request is issued. If we press the stop button, then the motor is stopped. That being said, we still need to create that logic. So we're going to copy this in. I'm going to paste this here. So if this is energized, then we want to issue a start. Otherwise, if this is de-energized, so we'll just make it really simple here. We're going to make this a loop. XIO. Then we want to issue a stop. And let's see if that works. All right, so I did find the mistake I made in the wiring. So while removing the button wiring and transferring that to the PLC, I completely forgot that I removed the jumper between pins one and 11. So this is a jumper which essentially automatically stops the drive. And if it's not present, then it's going to maintain it in a stopped state. So we can now test the drive. I've put the jumper back in and let's see what the logic looks like. While you're looking at the screen, there's also going to be a there's also going to be a feed of the drive. So just like that, we've implemented a simple control of a PowerFlex 525 drive. And with the use of two buttons that are linked to syncing inputs on the L24ER QB1B processor. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.